Hey there, welcome to another Encouraging Word. My name is Dave, I'm in Killarney, Manitoba. So glad you've joined us today. This week we are going to follow up on Sunday's message and speak about serving God when we get nothing in return. The Bible talks a lot about getting rewards for our service. In some cases, it will be praise from the Master, well done, good and faithful servant. In other cases, like Ephesians chapter 6, we're told to honor our parents because it's the first command with a promise attached to it so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Wow, that's quite a promise. But Jesus wanted to keep things in perspective, I believe. So he taught the difference between rewards here on earth and uh, rewards in heaven. During the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught very clearly that our service, be it giving to the poor or praying or even fasting, were not to be done so that others could see and reward us or think highly of us. In regards to fasting, he said specifically, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show their fasting. Truly, I tell you, they receive the reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you're fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Some people want you to see how hard it is for them to serve. But uh, Jesus said the exact opposite. Of course, Jesus calls to those who want to follow him. The main call that he makes is found in Matthew chapter 16, where he says, Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But when whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What will it profit if a man gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? You do not pick up a cross in order to look cool, or in order to look dedicated, or to look devoted, or for any human reason. When you took up a cross in those days, it was to die. Of course, Jesus was not speaking about dying physically. He was speaking about dying to ourselves spiritually, dying to what we wanted. Um, In one case, it says we're to pick up our cross daily. Uh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 24 says, And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Being a follower of Jesus means that people expect that we have died to our passions, our own earthly desires, in order to live for God. We live to serve God. You know, from a human standpoint, there's not a lot of good that comes out of dying to yourself. It can be hard. It can be painful. Um, Your focus shifts from what you want to do to what God wants you to do. Even Jesus said to the Father, not what I will, but what you will. Um, That is so far removed from modern Christianity, which promises us success and material blessings and an easy road. Uh, You will enjoy the blessings of God. There's no question about that, but it will involve some difficulty. Some of you are experiencing difficulty and pain right now. Maybe family issues, maybe physical issues, maybe mental, emotional issues. You're, you're going through hard times right now, and I understand that, and God understands that. Um, but let me ask you a question. Would you give up all your pain and suffering knowing that you would never experience the peace and blessing and joy of the Lord in this life and in the life to come? For some of you, that's a tough question because... Of what you're going through right now. But I want to encourage you, God is a good God. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him and look to Him and believe that He is. God is faithful and will never allow you to go through anything that He won't see you through. God is with you and He will not turn His back on you. Hold on to Him. Keep focused on Him. He is the first and the last, the beginning, the ending, the author and the finisher. Hold on to him even when you can't see clearly what you're going through right now. Let's pray together. Father God, um, I recognize that there are times when we go through pain and we don't understand why. When we hurt and and we we wish and we, 
we want so much for the hurt and the pain to go away. But we also recognize, God, that you will never allow us to go through anything, but that you won't be with us, that you won't strengthen us, you won't enable us to grow stronger out of our painful experiences, that you won't allow us to become a blessing because of the pain that we've gone through. So, Father, I pray that today for everyone that's listening who's going through some kind of pain, emotional trauma, some hurt right now, oh, I pray that you would strengthen them. I pray you would comfort them. I pray you would surround them with your presence. And I pray, oh, God, you'd help them to see clearly not necessarily a life without pain or a life of ease, but, Lord, they would see clearly your presence in their lives today. May they know your peace. May they know your joy. May they know the blessing of serving you, even during difficult days. I pray this in the name of our precious Savior, who loves us and gave himself for us. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. May God bless you today. I know that for some of you this could be a hard day. And I pray that you'll just be aware of God's presence in your life today. And that God promises to be with you, especially today. God bless you. Have a great day.